saw on BBC Wales. So I think everybody's included, but uh, I don't think you'll see a lot of them, but you'll certainly hear what they've got to say. <laughs> Look forward to that. Yeah, absolutely. Right. So, Larry, listen, it's going to be a very different Christmas for us all this year, um, and a lot of people will be experiencing loss. And we know that you sadly lost your brother very close to Christmas uh, last year. How did you cope with that? I think really it was the fact that, uh, quite surprising, surprisingly to myself, I went and spent the last few days of his life with him. Um, we, we, we were really close when we were kids, but over the years we drifted apart. There was only 14 months between us, and towards the end of his life, we, we really had sort of not, we didn't communicate much at all. Um, and then I spoke to uh, various people who suggested it would be a good idea if I went and, and spent some time with him. And um, and he was in a hospice up in Newcastle. And I was actually was involved with sort of caring for somebody who was in a hospice in the same situation down in London. So it's a, a difficult one. But in the end, I thought, no, I've got to go and I've got to go and be with him. And, uh, and what's interesting is that, you know, I, I slept in the same room with him for, for seven, seven nights as he just slowly, gradually drifted away. And, um, and it was probably, it was about the most important thing I've, I've done in my life because we were, even though, you know, for a lot of the time he was, it appeared he was, you know, in a deep, deep sleep, I was able to talk to him and he was able to respond to me over hours and hours of, of funny little chats and little sort of, of touching and holding each other like we like we hadn't done for years since we were literally little boys and i, I remember at, at one point because his problem was he'd had all all his voice box and everything taken out so mm. he couldn't he could speak but he was always very able to you know to make you laugh without that and um and he and he and he, he looked up at me and he and he looked like a, a little, just like a little boy again, and he and he just just pointed at, at his lips, and I said, "You, you want a kiss?" He said, "Oh my goodness!" Oh. Yeah. And so oh. I gave him a kiss on the lips, and we just hugged each other, and we we were both sort of stroking each other's head, yeah. and uh, like, like we were just like a pair of little monkeys, like we were when we were little boys. Uh, Larry, this is this is so lovely hearing you talk about your your brother. I know you've learned so much from the experience in terms of people yeah. reconnecting with their families over Christmas. What would be your message of hope for people going into 2021? Well, pick the phone up and mend anything you can mend, and if you don't think you can mend, it, give it a try anyway. I mean, when I, what really, what really comes to me is the fact that you, you you might have been not talking to each other for a long long time but certainly as as the, the clock was ticking on and his time was coming to an end there was no there was no mention of, of anything about what went wrong it was all about what was right back then i mean it's so precious and it's too easy to it's too easy to ride over it you mm -hmm. know larry uh, thank you for talking so honestly and open about your brother there and, and uh, for telling us on, on Morning Live and we wish you a peaceful and happy Christmas and a good New Year. Thanks for joining us Larry. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you Larry.